Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and this is another video in our little set of videos where I'm showing you how to just do some drafting on a basic site topo, this little rural road. It's an ugly little road, <laughs> but we got to draft the little topo so the engineer can do some design improvements. Um, so in the last video, try not to say um too many times, in the last video, we... Uh, went ahead and converted our 3D polylines to 2D polylines. We faked in some stubs here on the driveway and faked in a little bit of this edge of pavement line and we faked in a little bit of this driveway over here. And I told you new drafters absolutely do not ever fake in lines unless you talk to somebody because it can get you into trouble. And so what I want to do in this video is I want to add some hatch and some grade labels, hardscape grade labels. You'll see what those are in a minute. So uh, because I needed to rock out for a few minutes and take a break, um, I went ahead and added some hatch layers. So I've got one for concrete, one for pavement. You guys can see. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually, I kind of, I like my hatches to be gray. We may change that, but for now, let's make them gray. So I'm going to make them color 253. And you can see I went ahead and added the first two driveways uh, with this, uh, what I'm using as a pavement hatch. Uh, but I didn't want to do all that. I want to show you guys some of that. So we're going to come up here and do this driveway. This has concrete and pavement. So what I like to do on my hatches, and this is just a preference, is I like to do a little bit of an offset. So I'm going to run the offset command, type in offset. You can see I've already entered a distance there, one foot. You could change that if you want. Uh, I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to click my polyline here and just tell it I want it to offset one foot. Now you can see when I do that, I didn't get an offset on this line because that's not how the polyline was drawn. So we got to cheat. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a new polyline and we're just going to trace over this because uh, it's uh, simple. It's only got a few nodes. You can just do this real quick. Then we'll run that offset command again. And there's our one foot boundary. Okay, then I'm going to run the hatch command, spell hatch. And we'll just click a point inside. You can see we get that solid hatch. Okay. And what I want to do now is just use that match properties button over here on the ribbon that I told you about before. We're going to grab this hatch. And you remember I told you it changes not just the layer but also other properties depending on what you select. So you can see when I click this now, it's going to change the layer and the hatch pattern, um, which is what we want. So cool. Now we can go in. I just go in and delete these two polylines that I used to draw my hatch. Okay. All right, now we got a, a little bit of this concrete driveway here. I'm going to chase over this again. Now, when I have a, a line a surface like this that I didn't survey the whole, whole surface because of, of the mapping limits, instead of doing a straight edge like that to make somebody think that's a clean break, I always zig and zag it a little bit. Get your zig on. All right, sorry about that. AutoCAD froze up a little bit. All right, so you can see I just got a little little zag there so that people understand that's not a clean line. That surface continues. And we'll do our offset command. Choose a one-foot offset. We're going to hatch it. AutoCAD just run a little slow. All right, now over here we can choose our hatch pattern or over here. And uh, we're going to use the concrete hatch pattern for this there's actually a concrete hatch pattern and so you can see the pattern changed and then I want to grab that hatch and you just select it with a left click just like you do everything else and I just want to make sure it's on the right layer so I'm going to take it off a of layer zero and we're going to put it on the hatch concrete layer okay then I can go in and delete these two polylines oh, it's a thing of beauty there all right we got a little pavement area here we're going to do. And then we have this paved area on the road we're going to do. And then we'll be done with the hatch, I think. So let's go ahead and we'll trace over this. And there's other ways you can do this, too. You can use the region command if you want or the boundary command. But this works for the girls we're dancing with today. Okay, we're going to do our offset of one foot. And we're going to run the hatch command again. Click in that point. 
that's what we want. You can see it holds the last hatch pattern. We just have to change the layer. Oh, except it's not concrete, is it? It's pavement. So what we need to do is we need to match. We need to match that hatch pattern there. That's pavement. All right, now, the last hatch we're going to do is the road. I don't want to forget to delete these two poly lines here. Okay, the, the, the last one we're going to do is the road. And the road's a little bit tricky because we don't have clean boundaries on each end. So we're going to draw those in. Now, I am going to do this. I don't want to trace all those nodes for the road. So I'm going to copy these. We'll show you a little shortcut. Just copy them over into space. doesn't matter where. Just drag them over here. And we're going to go ahead and get our zig on at each end of the road. Now, on this one, I'm not going to go all the way up because that's just going to look weird. So I'm going to get my zig on over here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and run our hatch command inside of here. Nope, we're not because I forgot we got to do our one foot offset. So we're going to use the what's called the boundary command. Okay, we're going to pick a point. And what that does is it just creates a, a, a polyline around what would be a hatch. Okay, so it just traces, does the tracing for you. Then we can run our offset command. And uh, now we've got our hatch. Hatch boundary, I should say. So we'll put our hatch in there. Make sure we tell it that's pavement, not concrete. I'm using the sand pattern for that. We'll change the layer to the hatch pavement layer. Now here's the part you got to pay attention to. We want to move this hatch from this point right here. You pick a definite point, and then you can drop it in like that. Boom. And as long as you get that point in the right spot, oh, it's a thing of beauty, is it not? All right, cool. So we got our hatch in here, mostly pavement. Got a little bit of concrete here. I think this is pavement down the driveway there, but I'm not going to draw it in. I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to... Um, I want to add some grade labels. I also want to um, add some little slope indicators here. This is a pretty defined slope, so let's let's do the slope indicators first. So we're going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call this uh, blocks slope indicators, and I'm going to even leave it that color for now. So the way I I do my slope indicators is I draw a line per, uh, perpendicular to the top of the slope for each segment. Okay, and I usually run it um, from the midpoint of that segment. So we'll type in MID to get the midpoint. Okay, and then I usually trim it at the bottom of the slope with the trim command. So TRIM for trim. Okay, and then what I like to do is I just like to add a little triangle on here. So you can do that. You can just draw a circle. We'll go one foot. And it's really easy to just, we'll type INT for intersection. Eh, we got to flatten these. Somehow they ended up with some elevation on them. All right, let's try that again. I should be able to draw a line from this intersection point to this other intersection point. Yeah. This line must have an elevation on it, too. All right, trying again. We just want a line from this intersection to that intersection, and then from here to here. Okay, then we're gonna delete our circle. And I'm gonna leave this line for now. I'm gonna show you why. Because now we can just copy this from this endpoint and go down to our next segment, type in MID for the midpoint. Okay, and then we just wanna make sure that this line is perpendicular. So we'll draw a perpendicular line to this slope. Oop. Okay, then we're going to run the rotate command. I'm going to select these. I'm going to use this as the basis of my rotation. Click with the left click. I'm going to type R for reference. I'm going to click this endpoint, this endpoint, and that endpoint three clicks. Now that's lined up perpendicular. Okay, now we want to trim the end of this. And the other thing we want to do now that I've got this in the right spot is we're just going to trim that line. So that's what my slope line looks like. 
Now we're not going to trim this one yet because we're still going to use it for the copies. And uh, I moved pretty quick there, so it'll be good for you guys to see this again. So we're going to type MID to drop this on the midpoint. We're going to draw another line with the perpendicular snap, perpendicular to the top of the slope at this point. We're going to use the move command to move this line to here. That's just so we can get this lined up the right way. Then we're going to type the rotate command. We're going to select these three lines. We're going to say use this endpoint as the basis of your rotation. We're going to type in R and hit the space bar for reference. We're going to click two, the two ends of the lines we want to rotate. And we're going to snap this third point on the, on the line that we want to align to. Okay, and then we can delete this extra line. We can extend the slope down and we can trim this out. Okay, and we got maybe one more to do there. So we're gonna copy these three lines again from this point. And let's see, we'll run the mid midpoint snap. You know what, I, got, I think I got one more down here, yep. All right, so same thing. Want to line perpendicular to the top of the slope here. Then we'll move it over to the midpoint. And we're going to run the rotate command. Select our three lines. Enter the reference. Okay, and we're going to extend, in this case, to the bottom of the slope. Trim here. Okay, and we got one more to do. Draw a line perpendicular to the top of the slope. We're gonna move that line over to the midpoint. We're gonna run the rotate command, select our three lines for our slope indicator. Rotate from this reference point here. Line that bad boy up. Delete the alignment line. Trim out that line. Extend to the bottom of the slope. Okay. All right, thing of beauty, thing of beauty. Okay, now we can come in and just trim this last one out. I forgot to do that. Okay. Now, we're going to do our grade labels. Grade labels are just the labeling of, a, of the feature type and the elevation at critical points for the engineer because we're going to turn these points off. They're not going to be able to see them unless they're actually in the digital drawing. They won't be able to see them on the PDF or the hard copy plot. So... There's a couple ways you can do these grade labels. Uh, one is quicker, but in the long run, less efficient. <laughs> so you can do it either with a custom point label style, or you can just use multi-leaders. In this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to do multi-leaders. But we want to make sure we're working on a layer for that purpose. So I'm going to call this text grade labels. Okay, and you, your company might call them different things. That's what I call them. I'm going to give that a bright color so it stands out. By the way, we'll end up changing these colors when we go to plot, probably. And uh, we'll make that the current layer. Okay, then we're going to run a command called multi-leader. It's actually spelled m-leader. And uh, I'm going to pick this point here that I want to label. So pick right on the point. Then I'm going to drag out. And you can see it now it's letting me type in some text. So I'm going to type in edge of pavement. And then my elevation, el equals, uh, let's see, 1202.95 with the foot mark. Okay, now we want to set the scale here because I'm at 10 foot, so the overall scale is going to be 10. You can see that makes it bigger. I like my arrowheads to be a tenth of the overall scale. My landing distance, I usually do about 15 hundredths. Okay. All right, so now we have a grade label. That text looks too big. Let's go see. Yeah, text should be a tenth too. All right, now we got a grade label. Looks about the right size. So once you have that first one done, you can just copy these. And uh, we're just going to go in and, and label some key spots here. And you got to remember the engineer is going to have the contours too. So we're just labeling some grades at these critical intersection points like where the driveway apron hits the edge of pavement. And let's see, we're at 1203.12 there, 1203.13.
And this one's at, we're going to select that. We use that square grip to move it over the point, the arrowhead. And then we just edit the elevation. So this is 1204.84. All right, and this one is uh, 1204.64. All right, we'll grab that with a left select and use that grip to move the arrow over there. All right, that looks good. I'm trying to decide if I need one at the center of the driveway there. Yeah, we can add it, so we'll copy. Now, in this case, I'm gonna um, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna cheat this in a little. So I'm gonna just put this over the midpoint instead of the actual node because it's gonna be real close and it'll look better. So we're going to go to the midpoint of that line, and then uh, we've got a 1203.84, so, and uh, we're going to call this center line a driveway. Okay. Mm, oh, we got a power pull. I need a block there. I got to remember to do that. All right, so most of my gray labels on this look like they're going to be uh, edge of pavement, but let me do some ones that I know will be different. So I am going to label a few of these top of slopes. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll drop in a couple top of slopes labels here. I'm not going to do all of them, but I am going to do a few. We'll do three. So this is at a 1203.40. And we're going to change this now because it's not edge of pavement. It's top of slope. All right. And same thing here. Top of slope. That's at a 1204.91. And we're at a 1205.96. And top of slope. All right, we'll move this down. Okay, so I'm not going to make you guys watch me uh, put in all these grade, grade labels because there's going to be uh, a bunch more. Um, but you guys get the idea. Now, just to show you what this, to kind of give you an idea what this is going to start to look like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the points, and we'll turn the trees back on, those layers. And you can kind of get an idea of, of what this finished topo is going to start to look like. Okay, plus we'll have some contours in here, which will help a little bit. All right, and we'll we'll make sure those trees fade back. In fact, what we can do is select these tree blocks right now and say uh, right click on them and say display order send it back. That'll help a little bit. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna finish these grade labels. I'll drop in a PowerPoint block. And then I think in the next video, we're actually we're gonna actually going to be working on the surface, so we'll get some contours and some contour labels to drop in here, and then we'll be almost done. All right, I'm at 20 minutes. That's almost 20 minutes, about double what I like to do. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching this video with me, and uh, I hope you catch the final video where we create the surface and add our contours and contour labels. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next.